Welcome to Lady Sapiens, Breaking Paleolithic Stereotype. We will present you today, our recent studies show a new image of the prehistoric woman. Aided by immersive technologies, archaeologists are now shaking up the old cliché. Of the unique immersive qualities of VR help user experiment history in a new light and question their preconceived notion. A project exemplary in breaking boundaries between sectors to enrich one another with more impactful and meaningful content. And filming inside a video game, how oh, a mature game can have a second life as an educational and cultural media. This is the program of this panel. So let me introduce you today the speakers. Sophie Parot is a passionate and committed producer at Little Big Story, a French production company. We also have today Jeanne Marchalot, leads with enthusiasm the storytelling research department at France Télévisions, a French TV public broadcaster. And then Deborah Papernik created and leads the new business department at Ubisoft. Passionate about building bridges between different industries, she looks beyond the world of video games. So Lady Sapiens, what is for you this project? What does it come from? Uh, Lady Sapiens is actually a, a global project. It's a first uh, a scientific uh, documentary for France television and for international partners. Um, it's also a VR interactive experience with uh, extended location-based opportunities. It's a 360 degrees experience as well. Uh, and it's short films for museums. So um, it's, uh, it's really a, a unique alliance between uh, different industries, independent producers like us at Little Big Story, a major uh, actor in video game industry like Ubisoft and a public uh, broadcaster like France Television. So um, it all started because uh, we made a previous uh, documentary about uh, prehistory with uh, a team of uh, authors, uh, Thomas Siroto, Eric Pancas and Jacques Malater. It was called, it was called uh, Who Killed the Neanderthals? And we had so much fun making that film. We were brainstorming about a new story to tell. And we were uh, in, I have to say it was in the middle of the early Me Too movement uh, in 2018. And uh, we were talking about Homo sapiens, Homo sapiens. And we were in the middle of discussing and, and we said, well, what about women sapiens? What, what's the history of women? Has anybody told the history of a woman uh, in, in prehistory? And uh, so we went uh, looking, the, the author were, were started investigating and uh, there was absolutely no story about women in prehistory. I mean, I mean in a, for documentaries. Of course, there were women scientists working on the topic uh, together with their uh, colleagues, um, men. And um, this is uh, how we approach Sophie Archambault de Beaune. She's a French prehistorian and she really opened her research and her work to the writers of the film. And they, wrote, they went on writing a script out of her work and with other scientists too. And this became first a documentary, a scientific investigation. Um, we have to think that the, the, the women in prehistory, uh, we have lots of cliches about them. So the, the goal of this film is really to break the cliches and to go into uh, uh, the, the latest discoveries in, uh, in, uh, in, in, in archeological, uh, um, field because first prehistorians were men in the 19th century so they looked at fossils with their male uh, looks and uh, interpreted uh, them with their um, social background at that time we're doing exactly the same thing but we also have new tools and we have now male and female scientists looking at these fossils together and the result is really astonishing as um, the documentary will show. So this is how we ended up working on Lady Sapiens first. Very interesting, this approach with a more female analysis. But uh, how did the collaboration between Little Big Story, France TV and Ubisoft start on the project? 
Maybe Jeanne, you could answer this question. Yes, of course. Thank you, Aurelie. Um, well, from the start, France Television was really supportive um, of the project. Um, first, due to the scientific purpose, of course. Um, and then because of the last discoveries on, uh, on the Palo Tic. And above all, about the message um, on women, as just said Sophie. Um, and it's part of our mission as a public service. So our first reaction was great, but how can you um, illustrate this topic? So that was a big challenge. So I guess this is where Ubisoft comes in the picture. Historical documentaries are often illustrated by um, movie extracts of real life reenactment. So the authors of Lady Sapiens couldn't find a movie that il would illustrate the role of prehistorical women as they wanted to show it. And reenactment in real life means also a heavy, really heavy production. This is when Jacques Malater, one of the uh, co writer on the documentary, told Little Big Story that he had worked as an advisor on Ubisoft's video game Far Cry Primal. This is a game released in 2016 that is set in the Paleolithic era. And that was acclaimed when it was released for its beautiful images and its rather scientific, uh, uh, scientifically accurate treatment. So Little Big Story contacted uh, Ubisoft and we were very, very enthusiastic about the project for the same reasons uh, that uh, Jeanne mentioned, the, uh, a new look on the role of women and a mix between um, uh, science and, and history. So um, we created this partnership where uh, Little Big Story films inside the game of Ubisoft and the documentary will be illustrated by 10 to 15 minutes of computer generated images from the video game. And this way they will be able to show a virtual reconstruction, uh, reconstitution of nature and clan life. And um, all that was also developed with uh, scientific and historians. So that's how a video game, even if it's first uh, entertainment, because it's rooted in the work with historians and scientific, it can come and illustrate uh, a serious documentary. So I guess uh, it's also this, this combination that achieved to convince France Television who signed the, uh, the development, but maybe uh, we want to show a few images, right? Yes, I think that we could show the teaser of the documentary to see really the result of your work. Um, this innovative and immersive direction um, are a way for um, 
um, is a word, sorry, for uh, um, France Television to embark a uh, younger and a wider audience in that type of documentary made with vivid images um, closer to what they used to, I mean, video games. Um, so it's also a way to create a community around uh, Lady, Labia, Lady Sapiens label. It's also a way for France Television of being a leader um, in new digital contents um, and technologies and also new storytelling. In this project, Lady Sapiens, it was a risk for us um, to be part of the project um, with this um, new synergy with Ubisoft and Little Big Story. But it is our mission. Um, it's our goal to innovate. So we did it. And Deborah, you said a part of the documentary was filmed inside the video game Far Cry Primal, uh, like on a movie set. How is it possible to do that? Well, when we develop our game and our games are meant to be played by the player, there's always a camera system that's going to follow the action. But for our game, we also develop what we call a marketing camera that our internal teams is using to create the trailers for the games. For example, in Assassin's Creed, if you want to have the view of an eagle that, that goes over the city, then you have to have the camera attached to that eagle. So we do have this specific camera. And this is the camera that we used to film inside the game. So imagine a 3D world with a drone that you can pilot to film exactly whatever you want. In addition to that, you can direct the, the set. So Thomas Hiroto, the director uh, of the, the documentary, he knew the game very well. Like he played the game and he, um, he learned about the game exactly the same way he would have studied a real um, uh, landscape, a real place. So he really learned about the, all this world and um, to make sure that he could illustrate his scientific purpose. And then he played with the video game parameter to decide what he wanted to show in the scene. Do I want to show an animal? Um, how do I want the character to move in the scene? Do I want a woman uh, holding a, a weapon, etc.? cetera? And uh, so this is how he created the set and then was able to film with the angle of camera that he chose. He was very free. So these tools are really uh, powerful now. So it's a, we're repurposing our internal tools. Okay, thank you. And um, I also understand the documentary will be completed by a VR experience developed by Ubisoft that we have players literally embody Lady Sapiens, uh, meet other members of a clan, live like, and live key moments uh, of a daily life, artist, healer, huntress, craft woman. Um, can you tell us why you decide uh, to add a VR experience and what VR uh, brings to the table? Um, well, it's a new challenge for France Television uh, as a broadcaster to co-produce such experience for users um, and to explore new immersive experiences for a younger audience. Um, that is not attractive by documentaries and television. So that's why we decided to, to make, to co-produce uh, the VR experience of Lady Sapiens. Um, because there is a very strong power um, of immersion and empathy in VR. And that, that uh, reinforces the purpose of Lady Sapiens. When, um, it's a um, VR experience for Vive headset. So when you put the headset on, uh, you are 38,000 years ago, and it's a kind of magic. Um, you are in, at the um, prehistoric ages. You embody a woman. Uh, you live in countries with other characters without speaking their language. Um, you become also an artist in a cave. You're a craft woman in a camp that um, uh, to cut the flint, um, and even a hunter. So 
uh, the user really lives uh, 24 hours of the daily life of Lady Sapiens and can realize a real part in Sapiens society. Um, the UX experience impacts deeply. Um, we are giving new, and, and that way we are giving new entertainment to our audience. We are offering both TV program on um, our channel and platform and the viewer experience, all based of course of on scientific discoveries and on a video game. The VR experience is available on Vive um, and to reach a larger audience, we will have a 360 um, movie that will be available on our platform and maybe on Quest. And um, Sophie, uh, for Little Big Story, what is the purpose of this VR experience and how do you work on it? Okay, so for us, it was a, we thought uh, Lady Sapiens was a perfect project to imagine a, a, a direction we wanted to explore for a long time uh, at Little Big Story, which is a, a location-based uh, experiments, VR experiments, and new digital medias. And um, this, uh, with the film, we have a very um, exhaustive scientific investigation, the VR, message is very it's it's taking advantage of all this investigation but it offers a different way to bring the message to the to the audience um when you experiment the vr you are lady sapiens so it's a very different point of view but it delivers the same message no women were not just uh taking care of children and were submissive to their men and uh, probably uh, maybe gathering some fruits and uh, bringing uh, uh, some um, some uh, tiny food to the to the clan. They were major actors of uh, daily life and of uh, surviving uh, in the clans. So this is what shows the VR without explaining it, but you experiment it. So it I, we think it's very complementary to the documentary, and it's also very it's it's accurate. I mean the. The, the way we show it, it's accurate scientifically, but it's also um, uh, a more um, personal way to, uh, to experiment it really for um, the audience. And Deborah, so um, at Ubisoft, how did you work with all these scientific content and with your video game to create, uh, again, this new VR experience? Well, as I explained earlier, when for the documentary part, we're just filming inside the game and we're not modifying anything in the game, actually. We just choose the character, choose the set, and film inside the game. For the VR, it's very different. We exported assets from the game. So trees, characters, landscape, weapons, anything from the game to create uh, the VR experience in Unity. It's not even the same engine. We have our own engine for Far Cry. We have a different engine for the VR. But then we also uh, understood that the material that we had in Far Cry Primal wasn't completely adapted to the story we wanted to tell in Lady Sapiens. For example, we had to modify the vegetation, the, the trees, they had to be adapted to the time and place. So we concentrated on pines and junipers. We also had to dress up the character more warmly because the period was not exactly the same. Uh, so we're covering her arms and legs. <coughs> we also created tools that are uh, dedicated to scrapping and tanning skins that didn't exist in the game. Uh, but what we really concentrated on uh, was uh, the human aspects of the experience. So, you know, in, when you do a video game, you have animation and it's getting better and better. But if you really want to convey a emotion, it's really important to, to make the character as human as possible. So we used motion capture to create a more realistic and vivid animation, more fluid animation for each character. We also developed full body detection system so that the player can see their body and really feel that they uh, embody Lady Sapiens. And we focused on the communication 
with the other sapiens. It doesn't mean yet that you're talking because you don't know their, their language, but with gesture and body language, you happen to communicate. And the people who have already uh, tested the experience, it's, in, um, it's currently in production. Most of them are very um, touched by the encounter with the other people in the clan. Thank you, Deborah, with this enthusiast presentation. Now we can see the teaser of this VR experience. So the project will also have a museum dimension. So what shape will it take and will it be access where it will be accessible? Okay, so yes, we have um, we have the luck to have a first museal partner uh, right from the beginning of the development of the experience because um, there is a, a, an, an archaeological site in uh, Département de la Charente Maritime, this is in southern France, called Paléocide de Saint-Césaire. Sorry for all these French words, but it's, it's a very important site where a, a, a lady Neanderthal was found. She was named by um, the scientists who found her Pierrette because she was found under a, a rock which is called La Roche à Pierrot. So Pierrette, the Neanderthal woman, is the main uh, attraction of this Paléocide uh, in, uh, in, uh, in Southern France, Southern, West Southern France, sorry. And uh, this, um, this site and the, the administration uh, that runs it uh, really was thinking about rethinking the whole, uh, uh, the whole um, offer to their public. And when they heard about Lady Sapiens, they thought it's a really unique opportunity for them to jump into a project that is already uh, working because we were already in development with France Television and together with Ubisoft, both on the film and on the VR experiment. And uh, they decided first to, to be part of it. So we make, we can adapt uh, Lady Sapiens for the Paleocid with a different narration, of course, because their purpose is not really Sapiens, it's Neanderthals, but it's also one of the unique sites uh, in Europe where it was, it's not proven, but it's, it, we can find um, um, signs of the existence both of Neanderthals and Sapiens. So this is possible to say that why not? Pierrette could have met with Sapiens here. And this is exactly what we're saying. We're saying that Pierrette probably could meet uh, Sapiens in, in uh, and we adapt uh, an, a, a short film, a 12 minute film for the site um, explaining that. This will be adapted out of the feature length doc documentary. We, we shot specific sequence for that. And for the VR experiments, this is really interesting because we, we came with Ubisoft team uh, on site and they took lots of pictures and uh, asked questions and they re rebuilt uh, the Rocha Pierrot uh, shelter as it might have been uh, 38,000 years ago. And, um, and the experiment which will be uh, showed at the Paleocite will allow you to embody Pierrette instead of Lady Sapiens and to go and meet with the Sapiens clans and 
and then to learn how to craft and, uh, and hunt and everything that uh, Lady Sapiens is doing. So this is our first uh, museal experiment. And out of it, we're thinking with, uh, with our partner in distribution, Lucid Realities, about adapting uh, this uh, setup uh, for more um, museal experiments. And we're discussing with major institutions here in France. But we also think that once we have one very nicely shaped uh, exhibition, uh, we can probably uh, offer it to different museums in the world and any archaeological sites dealing with prehistory could be interested in showing uh, the VR experiments probably. Yes, and so Ubisoft again uh, adapt the content uh, of the project for this specific uh, site. Deborah, could you tell us more on it? Yeah, and I want to mention one part that hasn't been mentioned yet. It's an, yet another short film. When uh, Sophie, when the Little Big Story showed the trailer of the documentary to the Paleolithic site in the southwest of France, they loved it. They decided to embark on the adventure. And they also noticed the animals. And they asked Little Big Story if it was possible to also create a short movie concentrating on animals and do like an educational movie about prehistorical animals. So Thomas Siroto, again, the director of, of, the, um, of the documentary, he built a story. Uh, so he tells the story of Pierrette who goes to pick some specific uh, plants for her son. And he tells the story and he, because he knows the game so well, he can decide where Pierrette is, is going. And this is based on key moments that he has spotted um, in the game. So he tells a story, it's like a, a cartoon, like an anime. And he, this short film, 12 minutes, is entirely filmed inside the engine of Far Cry. So this is a, uh, based on the game, he chose a character with a rather shy behavior to embody Pierrette uh, so that she would run away from the wild animals. And so he, it was the first time that we did that. So he came to sit with uh, some, at Ubisoft with someone who could direct the camera to film exactly the scenes he wanted. And um, because it was the first time we did that, uh, we had to ask Pierrette to cross the screen from one side to the other. And many Pierrettes actually lost their life before, before we discovered how to temper the aggressivity of the animals. So uh, since uh, last summer, this short film is al already shown uh, at the Paleo Seats. And it's a great success with families. And every time Pierrette meets an animal, there's a zoom on the animal with uh, scientific information. Maybe we can see um, a few images here. Les anciens m'ont transmis le secret des plantes. Celles que je recherche poussent dans les terres humides, près des eaux calmes, loin des terres blanches de mon campement. Je vais devoir marcher longtemps, pourvu que les puissances invisibles me protègent. Mon cœur tape fort dans ma poitrine en approchant ces animaux, même si ces boutins et ces bisons ont l'air paisibles. So you come from three different industries. How did the collaboration go? And what have you learned from one another in this process? So the whole collaboration started with uh, the documentary, Lady Sapiens, and uh, we started to know each other uh, better and better and to understand how everybody works, which 
took a few weeks or months, uh, but it was going better and better. So we felt like exploring together more new opportunities. And this is when the collaboration on the VR experience came very naturally. It was one step further. So uh, we, we now film a new story inside the game. And because Little Big Story uh, wanted to explore this new type of narration, and uh, Ubisoft was also already working uh, on a location-based VR project, it was very natural for us to make this uh, new step. And then uh, France Television, who has a mission of developing new narrative form in AR and VR, committed from the beginning, from the development on both projects. And the Pierrette uh, film is uh, also interesting uh, to tell because um, the story is that um, everybody was uh, locked down uh, last spring in France and uh, museums were closed and uh, our production were stopped because we couldn't shoot anywhere. And then the, the Spalio site asked us to make this film about Pierrette and the animals of, uh, in prehistory. And this is the only film we were able to deliver on time during total lockdown. Uh, Thomas and the uh, Ubisoft teams worked together behind a computer, so it was possible to do that. And he they delivered this 12 uh, minutes uh, incredible um, uh, film for the Balio site, which is now showed there. And then also French TV in uh, this project. French TV is a French uh, broadcaster. So what is your role in the whole project, the documentary, but also the VR experience? Um, and how could you work together? Uh, well, we uh, co-produced the documentary and the VR experience and the uh, 360 films. Film, sorry. Um, well, it is not customary to have so many different actors influencing the production, um, authors, authors, producers, broadcaster, and scientific. Um, it's it's new, totally new to work with um, um, Ubisoft and the production uh, Little Big Story and France Television. Um, Lady Sapiens in that case is really an example of the creative French touch um, coming in ahead of scientific purpose and of narration, of course. It's a creative synergy that highlights French talents and our industri entertainment industry. Um, we have many talents in France about VR and AR, um, also in the uh, video games industry. Um, and France, in fact, is just after the United States, the second country who produces VR experience in the world. Um, so we, we as a broadcaster are very, very happy to co-produce um, uh, Lady Sabians and to be part of the of this great adventure. I, I'd like to add that the, the creative synergy depends first on the personalities working together. You have to have trust in each other's skills and learn how they function and also appreciate each other's added value. So for us, it's really a human adventure before anything. And this is the case for all the things that we're developing beyond video games at Ubisoft. It's really the people we meet and things we want to create together. The VR experience is actually directed by Camille de Velroy. She's an independent author, and her role was to bring the narration in the video games uh, universe. And when Little Big Story proposed to graft an independent author onto a VR production team used to working together independently, we were a bit uh, reluctant at first. And I, that was a lot of discussion with um, Little Big Story and, and Lucid Reality, the distributor of the VR. And uh, we were a bit afraid that it would affect our production rhythm and our creative process. But we wanted deeply to embark on this project. Uh, we were ready to take risk, uh, explore new ways to work together. Um, so during the prototype phase, we adapted our structure and the way we usually work. And as the production went on, we learned from the different experience of the author, of the co-producers, um, 
and, and the comments also from, from France Television were very useful or having the scientific come and test our, our VR experience was also very useful and we managed to, uh, to adapt our content little by little. All that brought us really a fresh view on things and uh, we're actually looking forward to repeating the experience of collaboration with uh, different industries. It seems to be a fantastic human adventure uh, behind the uh, documentary and the VR experience. And so, um, Sophie, are there more facets to this huge project? Well, maybe, thank you. Um, maybe I should say that first, the documentary is a very international uh, co-production. Uh, from the beginning, we had a, a co-production with our Canadian partner, Ideacom International. And uh, Ideacom convinced Radio Canada and TV Ontario to jump in. So there are um, broadcast, it, the film will be broadcasted in Canada. It's also a co-production with NHK in Japan um, that will make both its own version, which is a tradition for NHK, but they also want to uh, broadcast the 90 minutes uh, feature length documentary, uh, which is the clone of the French version with uh, Japanese subtitles, of course. We have a, a, a US partner, a public broadcaster as well, a PBS in the US with a, a very um, interesting and uh, uh, old uh, scientific slot called Secrets of the Dead. And we're really happy to be broadcast uh, in, in the US. Um, we have uh, RTBF in Belgium on board and uh, we have a, a Polish broadcaster and the film is distributed by France Television Distribution worldwide. Lady Sapiens, it's also a book. Um, right now it's a French uh, published book by Les Arènes. It's written by Jennifer Kerner, who is a prehistorian and a YouTuber. And she's working closely with the, the authors of the documentary. And uh, she is working out of the material made for the film. All the, she, she has all the interviews of the scientists uh, that intervene in the film. And out of it, she's, making a, she's writing a, a very uh, interesting uh, Lady Sapiens book that will be published uh, at the same time as the film and the VR will be released probably next fall, uh, 2021. And one last aspect is we're discussing also with the uh, France Television educational team to make uh, short films uh, for the young public because in France, uh, uh, prehistory is uh, studied at school um, and in college. And we are making uh, short films um, to the destination of children. And here, this uh, Lumni uh, channel was very successful during lockdown. So this is now, I think, a strategy France Television wants to develop too. Well, yes, it's great to co-produce an international project. Um, we are working um, to coordinate with our international uh, partners um, to create um, an international event and um, for the broadcasting of the film. Um, next autumn. And I would like to add also um, um, what we do um, at France Television in the, for VR and ER experience, experiences and projects um, with the storytelling research department that I represent. Um, because we are exploring new experiences by producing a project um, in VR um, for Vive, such as Lady Sapiens, or we have project for Quest also. And we, have, uh, we are co-producing AR projects um, for mobile devices, like the one that was uh, on um, last September called MOA, my own assistant. Um, and um, we are working on other projects like video games also. From Ubisoft's point of view, we're really proud that the, all the research work that we did with scientists for the video game, as well as the assets created by your team could be reused to illustrate the scientific purpose. And it's actually even more touching when you think that this video game, Far Cry Primal, was aimed at mature gamers. It was for people of more than, eight, more than 18 years old. And this new dynamic actually tends to develop more and more as Ubisoft creates video game deeply rooted 
in historical, geographic, or social reality that can have a second life beyond video games. For example, after the fire of Notre Dame, we extracted uh, the 3D model of Notre Dame from our game, Assassin's Creed Unity, uh, a game released in 2015, um, and that was about the French Revolution. So we created a virtual visit of Notre Dame de Paris thanks to content developed for the video game, also a mature game. And it will, uh, it, it's now deployed in a museum in Paris. Uh, and another example, the teams behind Assassin's Creed, uh, because again, this game is so rooted in history and it, it, it makes, um, it's actually, a, it makes history everybody's playground. And because they recreate these beautiful worlds that are historically accurate, they decided to develop the discovery tours. So we have a discovery tour for Egypt, a discovery tour for Greece, and we're working on another one for uh, the Vikings, corresponding to the last Assassin's Creed game uh, released end of 2020, Assassin's Creed Valhalla. The discovery tour is an educational mode that lets people explore the amazing universe of this past period uh, without accomplishing the game challenges. There's no pressure of, pressure of time. It's very easy. You just follow a line and you learn by just visiting the place. It was also developed with historians and teacher uh, to really add um, even more content and more accurate content. Uh, I guess we're, another point is the fact that we're, we're all French here. And we're all the ladies, by the way. <laughs> um, and we're part of the French touch, but we're very international at the same time. And um, as, as Sophie said, there's a good chance that the first major exhibition after the Paleo site will be uh, built with a French museum. But because it's such an international topic, it's such a universal topic, we're absolutely convinced that uh, other partner internationally uh, will come on board. And the initial exhibition will certainly be built in order to travel. So now Lady Sapiens is a global brand project. <laughs> And um, it's interesting uh, to reconsider women as a major part of the prehistoric times. So the time is up for this amazing session, but thank you so much for sharing your experiences, work, ideas with us. We all want now to see the documentary, experiment the VR, uh, and be uh, Lady Sapiens. So it's really an entertaining and meaningful experience. Thank you so much. Thank you.